Hello everyone, welcome to my Ironclad Archetype build series. Today we're going to be talking about how to create an infinite deck of cards. With Ironclad there are two ways to create an infinite deck of cards. Either you can be using the Unceasing Top or you can get a two cards combo where you have cards like Flash of Steel that let you do damage and draw another card and then reuse this, create an infinite deck of cards. We're not going to be talking about this version, we're going to be focusing on the Unceasing Top version. Okay, so first of all you clearly need to get an Unceasing Top. Unceasing Top is a rare relic and what it does is that if you have no cards in your hand, let's you draw another card. So essentially the card drawing is absolutely free, no energy cost, no card cost, you just can keep drawing new cards and that's what lets you create infinite cycle. In order for this to work, you need to have zero cost cards. Because if you have something cost one energy, even though the unceasing top will let you keep drawing it, you're eventually going to run out of energy. So when we talk about which cards to pick with this build, you need to pick zero cost cards. There are two main zero cost cards that work for this sort of build for the ironclad and that's anger and clash. Now the strategy which we're going to talk about in the next section varies depending on whether you have anger on or clash. But don't be afraid to take them both, it works even if you take them both. What Anger does is that it's zero cost cards that let you deal damage and that it creates a copy of itself into your deck of cards. Now this gives you a huge advantage which we're going to talk about later in the strategy section. And what Clash does it deals a damage of 14, but it only works if you have only attacking cards in your hand. Again we're going to talk about the advantages of this one later, but the main advantage is the fact that it does a lot of more damage than Anger. There are also other colorless cards that will work, for example Ash of Steel which lets you deal damage and draw another card. Well, Swift Strike, Swift Strike does a certain damage, I think it's like 4, and costs 0. Now the main thing is that you need to have Anger or Clash or Swift Strike or something like that for the Unceasing Top to actually do something, because you can technically get a infinite loop with something like finesse which gives you block but if you're never going to be able to do damage to the enemy that's useless so in order for this to work you need to have unceasing top and anger or clash or both now there are other zero cost cards that you can take things like flex rage offering especially flex is fantastic because what flex does is that it increases your strength by two for this turn but because this term is going to be infinite it just increases it forever and you can keep it in your hand also forever because you don't need to have in the infinite loop just that one card. You don't need to only draw anger. You can draw anger, flex, rage and just keep going it in a loop because it's all zero cost. Now the main thing is how you're gonna get to this zero cost. Now the problem here is that you start with a certain amount of cards. You have five strikes, four defenses, then you have bash. So you can't just like out of nowhere go and get just zero cost cards. You'd have to remove a lot of cards, which is pretty hard. So how are you going to do that? You're going to remove cards within combat and you can do that by exhausting them. So you would like to take exhaust cards. There are multiple exhaust cards that you can use. Corruption, Fiend Fire, and then some other ones like Second Wind. I'm going to focus most on Corruption and Fiend Fire because these are the best. In fire, what it does, it costs 2 energy and it exhausts every card in your hand and deals certain damage for each card that you exhaust. And most importantly, it exhausts itself. Now this is extremely powerful because when you use Fiend Fire, you can get rid of everything in your hand, including the Fiend Fire, and have only the, the zero cost cards left. The problem with things like Second Wind and other exhaust cards that don't exhaust themselves is the fact that you're still gonna have this one card left that costs one or two energy, no way to get rid of it. So keep that in mind. Corruption costs three energy, two energy upgraded, and what it's a power, so you can only use it once, and then it disappears from the deck of cards. And uh, what it does is it makes every skill zero cost, and also it will immediately exhaust upon use. So this is very important again for the strategy which we're going to talk about in a moment. Another good cards to pick are powers. Powers, like I said, they disappear after use. So 
you are actually making your deck bigger with them because the moment you use them they're essentially gone so if you have like 15 cards five of them are powers then essentially only have a deck of 10 cards so good powers are feel no pain this is absolutely the best because you're going to be exhausting a lot so you want to utilize the exhaustion and feel no pain gives you a block so especially if you use fiend fire or even corruption can get an extra block which is fantastic Generally, you don't have to be afraid to take any powers because they're like one time use, so they're not really making your deck too big. So don't take too many powers and focus on Feel No Pain mostly, but you can take a few. Offering is a zero cost card. It makes you lose HP, but it's especially good for the Fiend Fire because it lets you get more cards in your hand so you can use Fiend Fire on more cards. So that's why it's quite useful. I almost always tend to take it. Sometimes you won't be able to get an infinite deck of cards. If you feel like you might not be able to get it or if you're in the beginning stages in Act 1 and you just feel like you're removing a lot of cards and you have nothing good because you do need to remove cards, so you need to remove things like Bash and stuff and maybe you didn't get the Angry yet, it can be a good idea to create this sort of almost infinite deck of cards where you don't have only zero cost cards in your deck of cards, but what you have left after all the exhaustion and removing is like maybe one or two cards that cost one energy. So essentially if you have like one card that costs one energy and maybe four zero cost cards with this, you should be able to at best get a cycle of 15 cards where you just keep drawing the four cards, then the one that costs something, then the four and again. But of course it's random so you can get a lot less, but this can be a good way and I'm actually going to show you in the video right now. An example of an almost infinity build. A good way for this almost infinity build is Rampage because every time you use it, it does more damage. So even though this is not an actual infinite build, you can do a huge amount of damage to the enemy because you can play the Rampage maybe two, three times per turn depending on how almost infinite your deck of cards is. If you have corruption, can sometimes afford to take some defensive cards that actually cost something because the corruption will let you exhaust them. A good tip here is for example True Grid because it does let you exhaust another attacking card so if you have the situation like we had before where you're unable to get a completely infinite deck of cards you can use the True Grid to maybe get rid of another strike or something like that. Okay so now that we kind of talked about which cards to pick let's talk about the strategy. So first of all I said that the strategy depends on which zero cost cards you have and which exhaust type cards you have. So let's start with the zero cost cards. Like I said, you can have Anger or Clash. We're going to focus on these two. Swift Strike and these other cards work the same way as Clash. So the huge advantage of Anger is the fact that it creates a new card. So for example, if I have three cards left in my deck and one of them costs something, like a regular strike, just, just I could, wasn't able to get rid of it. Then I have a Clash and then maybe I have like Flex. So I have Flex, Clash and Strike. You will be able to play this around three times because you expect that you get the Strike three times and you're able to use the Clash because the probability of getting the Strike is one third. But if you have Anger, it starts with a probability of one third and the same turn after you used Anger you get an extra card so now you have four cards. Now the probability of getting a Strike is one fourth and it, it keeps growing so if you use Anger no, two, three times, suddenly it's like one six. So Anger is great if you aren't at a certain that you can remove that many energy cost cards. Then Anger is fantastic for you because the probability of getting a card that actually costs something is lowered every time you play your Anger. So as you as you can watch in the video, I actually have some cards like Strike that actually cost something. But because I have so many Anger cards and I keep drawing them and using them so I can create new copies, I don't actually get the strike man often and I can keep doing a huge amount of damage. This would have not worked if I had the Clash. The advantage of Clash is that it does more damage. It does 14 instead of 5, so it's actually almost like 3 times Anger. But there is one more disadvantage to Clash and that's a lot more serious than what I've talked about so far. It's the fact that you can't always play Clash. If you have defensive cards in your hand you cannot play Clash and this can be a huge problem if you have something like Fiend Fire and you want to get rid of a, of a set of cards and you have Clash in your hand 
you can get rid of it because you also have a defensive card and then if you play the fiend you're gonna lose the clash card and if you don't have anger and clash was the only zeroquest cards in your deck there is no way you can create an infinite deck of build and you cannot play the fiend farm you're basically stuck so what you want to do is you want to have some hand manipulation cards like Warcry that lets you draw a card and take a card from your hand and put it on top of a draw pile and you can use this to take the clash, put it away and then play with the fiend fire like you want it. This is really important so clash requires things like Warcry and stuff like that. Anger doesn't require it because Anger can always be used, so even if you have Anger in your hand at the same time as Fiendfire, you can just play Anger, which means it's gonna go into your discard pile and you can just easily use Fiendfire, you don't have to worry about any card manipulation, but if you have Clash, you do. Okay, so as we talk about this, there are also a different strategy depending on whether you have Fiendfire or Corruption, which are the two main cards that you can use for Exhaust spells. There are some others, but we're gonna focus on these two, because they both disappear or exhaust themselves after being used so you don't have to worry about actually getting rid of if you have something like second win you still need to get rid of the second win card in order to get the truly infinite deck with fiendfire and corruption you don't have to do that so that's why i recommend these two and i don't even take second win because i know that if i want to get infinite i won't be able to okay so what's the difference corruption what it does, it makes any skill immediately zero cost, so they work in this infinite loop. They're not destroying your infinite loop, which means that if you have corruption, what you want to do is you want to get rid of every attacking card that costs something. You can either do that by removing them, and this is a great advantage because suddenly, if you have like the original five strikes, five defense, and the bash, you don't have to worry about getting rid of like 11 cards. You only have to get rid of these five strikes and this bash. This is fantastic. And now, cards like True Grid or even the Second Wind that I've talked about before can be useful because now, after using Second Wind, Second Wind because it's skill, it will exhaust itself. After using True Grid, because True Grid is a skill, it will exhaust itself. What True Grid does, by the way, it exhausts one other card and gives you a block. So you can use True Grid to get rid of a strike, for example, and then it will exhaust itself, which is fantastic. And with any of these exhaust cards, you always want to use Feel No Pain, which is a fantastic power. Fiendfire is a little bit different. Fiendfire exhausts everything in your hand and itself. So when you're playing Fiendfire you have to be a bit more careful about which cards you have in your hand because you would like to get rid of all the strike and all the attacking and defensive cards that cost something. So a good thing could be having like offering or something lets you draw more cards just so you can get rid of everything. Bat Trance can be good too but be careful because Bat Trance it lets you draw 3 cards and then this does not allow you to draw any more cards. So you cannot use Battle Trends on the turn that you want to use the combo. You can use it on the turn before, but not on the combo because then Unseizing Top will not give you anything new because Battle Trends blocks it. So when you have Fiendfire, you want to use the card manipulation, like, like we mentioned before, to get the Anger cards and the Clash cards and the other Zero Cost cards out of your hand, and then use Fiendfire to exhaust everything else. There is one advantage to Fiendfire over Corruption, and that's the fact that Skills don't exhaust themselves, so skills that are zero cost like Rage and Flex can be used continuously over and over again even in infinite decks. If you have Corruption, you're gonna exhaust them upon use. I actually think it's not a bad idea to get both, because you can use Corruption to get rid of all your defenses or make them free, and then you can use Fiendfire to get rid of some of these attacking cards that you have. So one of the weaknesses is that in order to get the infinite deck, you need to get rid of a lot of cards, but if you do this too soon, you might not be able to get through to even the first boss or some monsters on the start of the act too. Especially if you don't have anger, if you don't have clash yet, and you only have unceasing top and the cards that cost something, no, no anger, no clash, then it can be a big problem to even like survive these fights, so sometimes you just have to take some attacking card. and. That can be a problem that you just don't survive until you get there, so that's why even if you have corruption, if you get it really early, it can be a good idea to get Fiendfire as well, so that you can afford to take maybe one or two good attacking cards that you will eventually exhaust once you're ready to go to your infinite build. Another huge weakness is curses and statuses. 
because Unceasing Top only works if you can play these cards and if you have a curse you cannot play it, if you have a status you cannot play it, your Unceasing Top is done, your infinite loop is done, you cannot do anything anymore. There are ways to fix this, there's a relics, for curses it's blue candle, for statuses it's medical kit, lets you play the card, exhaust it, it with curses makes you lose 1 HP but it's not a big problem. Again, if you have feel no pain, fantastic, you can get some block even from playing these statuses, but if you don't, then um, it's still good because you can at least keep playing the unceasing top. Okay, but now time to talk about the biggest weakness of infinite builds. You probably already know what it is, but if you don't, you can watch him right now. That's the time eater. I'm gonna show you exactly how you die with them. I have a nearly infinite deck of cards. I do have one palma strike, but I never run out of energy because the time eater stops my turn. And I do have anger, so the fact that I have palma strike is almost irrelevant as I can play anger so many times because I replay the palma strike. The problem here is that, especially with anger, which is a fairly. you only does 5 damage. With 12 turns you're doing 60 damage and this is just not enough, the time eater has too much HP and you can't survive too many turns. This is why it can be more useful to have a clash because clash does damage of 14 so if you can use it 12 times that's actually 140 plus 28, 168 damage per turn if you only had clash so that's a lot more likely to actually kill the time eater. You can do this for a few turns but with the anger it can be really tough so you need a lot of flexes and things like that which again if you have the corruption version then you probably aren't going to be able to get it because they will exhaust themselves so however that's not to say that there isn't a way to beat the time eater with an infinite deck of cards and i'm going to show you once you're going to be watching the reviews that i'm going to show you a video where I actually killed the time eater with this infinite build and uh, it's actually a slightly different build that not we've been talking about because it doesn't have any exhaust cards i was able to get the peace pipe so i was able to remove most of my cards only kept like one or two defenses but in most cases the time eater does destroy the infinite builds i mean that's why they created him Okay, so let's move on to some relics that are very good. First of all, Peace Pipe, Medical Kit, Blue Candle, as already mentioned, and Peace Pipe will let you remove cards at rest side. Absolutely fantastic. So Medical Kit is for getting rid of statuses, Blue Candle of getting rid of curses. Kunai and any other relics that utilizes when you're using three attacks per turn. It doesn't matter whether it gives you dexterity, strength, block damage, whatever, anything that utilizes the use 3 attacks per turn is fantastic. Even things that utilize the use 3 skills per turn can be fantastic, especially if you're using the Fiendfire version, because you can keep reusing things like Flax and Rage, so in this infinite run you're actually gonna often use skills so you can still get a lot of damage, block, dexterity, strength, whatever the relic is giving you from that, so anything that you that utilizes using some type of cards many times per turn. It's fantastic. Charon Ashes, everything that's related to exhaustion. Benip, also nice, every time attack doubles. Also, any kind of a relic that gives you energy or block or anything every time you go through an entire deck, because as you have a very small deck, of cards are gonna keep drawing from that, so it can be very useful as well. And finally, my review of this build. The thing about this build is that it's absolutely fantastic. It can beat anybody except the Time Eater. The Time Eater is the thing that destroys infinite decks. Otherwise, it's essentially a certain way to win any fight because once you get to the infinite loop, you can just destroy him. But it can be pretty hard to get there. It really depends on where and when you get the unceasing top. If you can get it in the beginning, then it's okay, it's fairly fine. But if you get it at the end of Act 1 or in the middle of Act 2, you might have already got tried to start a different build. So you have a lot of cards, so that can be a big problem. So it really depends on when you get the unceasing top. So I feel like this is more for like dailies or custom games when especially dailies because sometimes fairly often in dailies you can get the rare relic in the beginning which is unceasing top it's actually been i think maybe two or three relics 
two or three dailies just in the September, where we got maybe even four. We got unceasing top within the first act, sometimes even before we started the first act. So then if you know that, you can kind of use that information to create your deck cards around it. But um, it can be hard to really get to the infinity if you don't get it in the top soon enough. If you do get it, you're unstoppable unless you're fighting the time eater. That's not to say that there isn't a way to defeat the time eater, I just want to point it out there is. But it can be really rough and most of the time time eater is just going to kill you. And a good tip is, if you know you're going to be fighting the Time Eater, you want to buy zero cost defense, or only if you're not using things like corruption, otherwise it's useless, so that you will be able to redraw some defense every turn, so even though he's hitting you for a lot once he stops your turn, you will be able to get some defense. The main advantage in this deck of build that I had that helped me stop the Time Eater was actually the Kunai Relic. Because what it did, it gave me dexterity every time I used three attacks, and because I had the infinite run, I kept reusing three attacks. But in my infinite run, um, I also had something like finesse, so this wouldn't work with corruption, which is why, just like a disadvantage of corruption, was that when I did manage to use the finesse, instead of giving it me a block of two, it gave me a block of seven. And then, you know, I had a defense card or true grid that I used, which gave me a block of twelve. Which is really huge for, for a single cost card. So this is how a single relic can really change your build. If I didn't have Kunai, probably would die to the time meter. For other enemies it doesn't matter because if once you get infinite you get infinite. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did please write down in the comments, subscribe and don't, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And tell me what your tip is on the unceasing top deck of build. What relics you like with it, what weaknesses what is your review on this and how do you compare it with some other builds like thing blow build barricade build or demon farm build okay, thank you so much for watching and i hope i'll see you in the episode about the next archetype build bye bye